Hey guys, this is Scott from The Clay Lab, and welcome to the first of what we hope to be many range reviews. Now we all have that favorite range, the one that we go to when we have a weekend off, pretty much our home range. And for me, that's Hunter's Point Sporting Clays in Washington, North Carolina. Now when my friends and I started this channel, we set out to make objective reviews of ranges and products and every aspect of sporting clays. And that's what we're gonna do today. That being said, so many aspects of sporting clays are subjective. And so you're gonna get a little bit of that today as well. Now a little bit about Washington, North Carolina. As you may have noticed, this is not Washington, DC. So for all of our overseas viewers, we have a lot of Washingtons in this country. So don't get too confused. Now our particular Washington is located on the coast of North Carolina. This is an absolutely beautiful part of the country and home to the world famous Outer Banks. Now as we zoom in a little bit closer, you'll see Washington's located on the Pamlico River, which gives it that direct access to the Pamlico Sound and to the ocean beyond it. Because of this, this is a popular stopover on the Intracoastal Waterway. In case you're wondering, that's me down there on the right. Anytime you're talking about a travel destination, the very first question is, how do I get there? As always, if driving is a reasonable option for you, that's what I would recommend. But it's fair to point out that there are three airports in the area. The biggest is Raleigh-Durham International, and you can get a large number of flights from that location. But Pitt Greenville Airport and my personal favorite, Coastal Carolina Regional Airport down in New Bern are great choices. The reason I like New Bern's airport so much is the sheer simplicity of it. There are only a few flights a day, but check-in is an absolute breeze, and it's just a nice experience. Just two miles north of downtown, you get to a private access road that takes you into Hunter's Point. What we're trying to do with these videos is to give you an idea of what shooting at a tournament here is going to be like. So, one thing that we want to start with is by showing you where you're going to park when you arrive. As you're pulling down the access road, if you brought a trailer with you, it's going to be right there on the left and people will direct you to a spot. If you did not bring a trailer, there's just regular parking out here in this little field. For major tournaments like the East Coast Championship, they actually have people in golf carts that will act as shuttle drivers. And so once you've got your gear unloaded, they'll actually drive you over to the main clubhouse. So you'll go down this little road, cross a little bridge, and the check-in is going to be straight ahead. Now this area that we're coming to is pretty much the focal point of the whole course. Down there at the bottom right is where a big pavilion tent is typically set up for the Saturday night dinner. And uh, you'll also see a lot of vendors and food trucks in this area, as well as one of those nice portable bathrooms with the running water. Heading over to the clubhouse, there's a small outbuilding to the left. Behind that is a small group of kennels. On the right side, just behind that little group of vehicles, is a nice area with picnic tables. It usually stays pretty nice and shaded in the spring and summer months. Straight ahead though is a covered dining area and typically for smaller tournaments they'll have a buffet lunch set up there. They make the absolute best pork chops. You guys have to check them out. Straight ahead we have the check-in area and pro shop with this wraparound porch with super comfortable chairs. They also have some TVs rigged up so you can watch scores during major tournaments. Inside the pro shop, you'll find a nice range of shotguns available for rent or for purchase, including a really nice selection of used shotguns from companies like Beretta, Kriegolf, you name it. They've probably got one on hand. Definitely worth checking out. So heading back outside after you've collected your registration materials, you're going to want to warm up before you hit the course. And the best place to do that is at the warm up five stand uh, that's just across the parking lot. For larger tournaments, though, you have a second option, which is the make or break course, and that's just outside the door of the clubhouse. If the warm up five stand area looks familiar to you, it really should. If you've been following this channel, this is where we filmed our first two videos, and I think you'll see a lot more of it over time. This particular five stand is set up nicely with seven traps and some crossing targets, even out to 50 yards. It's a great warm up. If you're really looking for a challenge, though, head over to make or break. Braxton Oliver and Mike Oliver really know how to throw some targets, so this can be pretty challenging. Go back and check out our first episode if you want to see exactly how Make a Break works, but it's a ton of fun. Anyway, now that you and your squad are all warmed up, let's head out onto the main course and see what that's all about. With these range reviews, we want to try to give you an idea of what the shooting background is going to look like, 
so you can be prepared both from the standpoint of bringing the right lenses for your glasses and just being able to practice in the right way. So the first thing I want to start off with here at Hunter's Point is talking about the trees. The main course is dominated by heavily forested areas. And so the reason that's important in this particular case is that the first seven or so stations uh, are facing a westerly direction. And so if you're shooting those later in the day, you may find that you're getting the sun in your eyes a little bit more than you would if you were shooting that side of the course in the morning or even at midday. In many instances, the trees will actually block the sun, but you can also get a little bit of the strobe effect that you see here. Uh, and that's, once again, just very dependent on the time of day. I believe I shot this uh, no more than about an hour before sundown. Uh, and so that's a pretty extreme example that you're seeing right there. That being said, after shooting a number of events here, I can tell you that the trap setters are pretty good about taking that into account. So don't worry about that too much. Now, I can't talk about the trees without pointing out that there's a huge advantage to this being a forested course, and that is that you have built-in shade the whole time you're out there. I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to put sunscreen on, and you just end up with a sunburn, and you're miserable the next day. And so this is a really, really nice feature. It keeps you cool during those hot summer shoots. For those of you who are curious, they use a long range target key system here. It's pretty straightforward to use and it can even be set up to shoot as a solo shooter. So uh, that's pretty nice for practice situations as well. Hunter's Point has a wide variety of interesting stations, but a few really stand out. One in particular is station 14. It's the second to last station and just as you're getting to the end of the course, they hit you with this one. This station overlooks a wide field I didn't measure it, but I'd estimate it's anywhere from 75 to 100 yards wide, and it's overlooked by this 40-foot tower. The tower has a pair of traps that are at different levels, and naturally they can be set at all kinds of different angles, so you never quite know what you're going to get from one competition to the next. In general, though, you have to be ready for some pretty fast outgoing birds coming from that overhead angle. The target setters here are also going to tend to move the actual shooting station around, anywhere from the base of the tower all the way out to maybe 40 yards to the right of the tower. For years, or at least as long as I've been shooting here, that station 12 tower has been about the most intimidating thing. And that's just from my standpoint. But that's nothing compared to this new addition to Hunter's Point. This new addition is a 100 foot tall cherry picker and it's fully mobile. You never quite know what station it's gonna show up at from tournament to tournament but guaranteed whichever station it's at, you're gonna have a good time. Now, the reason I say have a good time instead of crying is that a common theme here at Hunter's Point is that they do a really nice job setting the traps. It's that good combination of difficult and fair that we're all looking for. I'm not sure who set the targets today, but they're particularly good. I mean, guess it was Braxton because he likes to do this sort of thing to us. You've got one target that's going downwards at a pretty fast speed, but it's pretty straightforward to hit. The next one's going up and away. And from the ground, it's hard to tell that that one's moving in an upward direction. Here's a view of the targets from the ground. Naturally, since I'm the one editing the video, these are guaranteed hits. I'm not gonna go into any details on how many times it took me to hit these targets though. Now the Hunter's Point Complex as a whole sits on 240 acres. They have 15 stations on their main course and they use primarily promatic traps for anybody who's interested. For small local events, you're gonna find most of the action takes place back behind us at the main course. But for larger events, which is why you're probably watching this video, such as the East Coast Championship, as you head out this direction, you're gonna find that you get into a wide open space. As you head down the gravel road to your right, you come to the FITAS course. Parkours one is over by that nice pond, then you have two and three out in the open in the field. Here you'll tend to see cherry pickers and things of that nature to really give you a lot of challenge. Parkours four is a little bit more difficult to spot and you'll see that pop up here in a second. It's actually back in that wooded area. So you do get a little bit of uh, closed in parkours in addition to the big fields. Straight ahead, you have the side events like the sub-gauge events and super sporting. 
That little grove you see off to the left is where the competition five stand is typically set up. Now this may change a little bit from year to year, so don't hold me to any of this. And of course, they like to be flexible at Hunter's Point, uh, but that's generally the setup I've seen for East Coast Championship. This second little smaller field back here is also used for those sub-gauge events. Now we've turned around and we're headed back towards the parking area. Just in case you're wondering, the shooting stations are actually along that uh, dirt road that you see there. So all the shot is going off to the left side of your screen. And so it's, it's pretty good from a safety standpoint. Um, here's where I want to kind of talk about uh, sort of a tale of two courses. So if you'll remember, the main course was in the heavily wooded area. Uh, there's a lot of background for you to see. Fee task is about as wide open as any fee task course that you'll see. This almost reminds me of being out west a little bit more. You don't really get a lot of background. And so I personally find this to be a pretty challenging fee task, but in a good way for sure. The other reason I'm showing you this return view is to give you an idea of the distances involved at this course. I would highly recommend bringing your golf cart or UTV with you. But the good news is if you don't have one of those, they actually have an excellent shuttle system here during major tournaments. So don't worry about that too much. I heavily used it last year. After you're done shooting for the day, I definitely recommend checking out downtown Washington. This is a real hidden gem, and unless you're from Eastern North Carolina, you've probably never really had a chance to visit before. This is an area with a beautiful waterfront. Uh, you'll see as we're about to fly over that uh, there's a nice boardwalk going all the way down the waterfront, extending pretty far down the river. So if you're not completely worn out from your day of shooting, definitely worth giving it a try. Also, Anthony Matarese, real chaos would look perfect docked right there. So I'm just saying. Washington has a really nice combination of small town charm with the restaurant selection and shopping selection that you'd expect in a bigger city. So it's uh, really worth checking it out on your night off. If you're anything like me, you may find that's a bit difficult sometimes to pick out good restaurants when you're traveling. With that in mind, I want to give you some of my favorites. These are in no particular order, but the first one is the Hackney. This is an upscale American restaurant that's located inside an old bank building. It's pretty cool. Next up is Grub Brothers Eatery. They have a nice Cajun themed restaurant. Service can be a little bit slow at times, but well worth checking out. The final place on our list is down on Main Street. If you ask the Oliver family, this is their favorite place in town. And that's saying a lot. This restaurant was featured in a recent PBS documentary and you can tell why when you go there. Uh, even though it looks like a fairly simple restaurant from the outside, when you get inside, this is the crowd at 3 p.m., believe it or not. Uh, that's how good this food is. And I can recommend everything on the menu that I've tried at least. In particular, give the buffalo shrimp a try. Definitely top notch. Overall, for those of you looking for a shoot that's out of the ordinary and in a beautiful location, I highly recommend Hunter's Point Sporting Clays. If you've already been to Hunter's Point before, you really don't need me to tell you how great it is. But for those of you who haven't been before, hopefully this has been convincing. Definitely worth giving it a try. If you're interested in registering for a tournament here, find them on Score Chaser. The two big tournaments are the East Coast Championship in March and the Larry Corbett FITAS Classic in November. You can pretty much count on our entire Clay Lab crew being there. So if you have to be at those tournaments, come by and say hi. We'd love to meet you and love to hear your ideas. If you want to help out the channel, hit the subscribe button. It helps us in a huge way. Also, we're always listening to your comments. So if you have a good idea for a video or another range you want to see, let us know.